Hi and welcome back to Change Your Perspective. I am excited as always. I feel as if I say that every single time, but I really am excited and happy to be doing this. This has been something that I have dreamt about for years and now, amazingly, in this time of pandemic is when the Lord has chosen for me to begin doing it. So I'm excited. I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to walk in purpose and to live according to His will for my life. And so my, I hope that you will do the same. Whatever it is that God wants you to do, I encourage you to do it. That, of course, is not a lesson for today, but that was just something that I thought I'd throw in as led by the Holy Spirit. Today, I'd like to share on applying the word of God. It is so important as a child of God to apply the word to your life. It's not just about reading it and feeling good that, yes, I read Matthew chapter 1 today. And, you know, you just go ahead and go through your day. Even though many of us do that, and I have been guilty of doing that, um, that actually is not what we are supposed to do. It's not just about reading, it's about applying. So that somehow explains why there are other people in the world who are knowledgeable of the Bible and they know the word, but are they applying it? So yes, yeah, so it's important for us to apply the word of God to our life. In the year 2019, which was just last year, you know, I learned this lesson and it was actually a very difficult one for me to accept. One of my leaders, you know, she showed me pretty much that, yes, I know the word, but I wasn't applying it. And it's very easy for many of us as Christians to fall into that trap that the enemy sets for us, which is to simply act as a Christian. And you know, you grew up in a Christian household, and so you go to church every Sunday, and you genuinely love God. It's not just an act. You genuinely read the Bible and you worship in ministry, but you don't necessarily apply all of God's teachings to your life. And so what happens is that your mind doesn't fully be renewed and your heart even isn't renewed and connected to God in the way that it should be. And that is what had happened to me. I was living the Christian life, but I wasn't truly doing it. And I wasn't doing it from my heart. On the inside, I still had things that I was struggling with, and I still especially struggled with anger. And I had to learn to apply the Word of God. So this is what I'm going to help you with today, application of the Word of God. So this morning, I was reading Matthew chapter 26, and this is actually a chapter that Lord led me to about two days ago and it's only this morning that it occurred to me that he led me to the story of Jesus before his death burial and resurrection and tomorrow is Good Friday so this is actually a very important and very good chapter to be reading at this point in time at, at this season of Easter yes Every day feels like the same day, and to some, it may be a surprise that tomorrow is a holiday, but yes, tomorrow is Good Friday, and this upcoming weekend is Easter weekend. So I've been reading Matthew chapter 26, and we're just going to look at that and see how we can apply this book, or even the lessons that can be learned from this book, and how it can be applied to our lives. Matthew chapter 26 from verses 6 to 13 speaks about the story of the woman who poured out the oil from an alabaster box. In reading it in Matthew, now we know of course that the Gospels all share similar stories, right? So this story is of course found in other, of, in other books. So in this chapter, however, Matthew shares that a woman's name is Mary. 
and this is the same Mary who is the sister of Martha and Lazarus. So Mary, I, I just love the fact that it, it is this Mary because if you know the story of Mary and Martha, many pastors would have of course spoken about this, but I'll still share it, that Mary at one point Jesus had visited their home and Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to his teachings while Martha was busy preparing the meal for everyone. And both of them was doing something that would be considered good. Martha, of course, thinking that who preparing food for everyone was a good thing. But Jesus told her that Mary chose the better way. And so this is the same Mary. Mary who clearly loved Jesus in a powerful way. And so Mary takes a very expensive ointment and some version say perfume and she breaks the box and she pours it on Jesus's feet and really in the book of Matthew chapter 26 you'll read that he said that she poured it on his head so she pours it out on his head and his feet and Jesus now even though the disciples scolded her he actually stopped them and said that what she did was a good thing because she was preparing him for burial and then he said something that was so powerful to me he said that what she did wherever the gospel is preached people will know the story of what Mary did for him and this reminded me of the song Alabaster Box by C.C. Winans that many of us may know it's a song that has such heart and it speaks so beautifully of this story about Mary and Alabaster Box. And, you know, she was sharing in the song that she has come to pour her praise on Jesus like oil from Mary's Alabaster Box. And this can be seen as an example of application of the word where she would have read the story and just as Mary out of her love and her devotion to Jesus, she came and she poured out this expensive oil. She didn't care about the cost. She poured it out on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair out of her love and devotion to him. And I felt inspired to actually write about what are the contents of my alabaster box. And so I did. And in my alabaster box, even though, yes, I don't have an expensive ointment or perfume or oil that I can physically pour out on Jesus' feet, what can I give? And so I felt like I could give my testimony. And so I started to write out all of the things that I would have gone through in my life. And, and, and the fact that in spite of it all, God... Jesus is the one who set me free from each and every one of those things. He's the one that broke those chains. He's the one that loved me in spite of. He's the one that brought me through. And that is why I am here today. And that is my alabaster box. What is yours? And this is how you apply the word to your life. So now my, I would love to hear your stories. I will share mine. Um where I will share what I would have written on at the end of this video I'll share what I would have written about what, is, what are the contents of my alabaster box and I would love to hear each of your stories you don't if you don't want to give everything that's okay but if God has set you free if he has broken the chains if he has given you breakthrough then there's no need to be ashamed there's no need to be afraid to speak about what God has brought you through. Share so that someone else can overcome too. Share what are the contents of your alabaster box. And let's pour our praise. Let's pour out our oil on him. <sighs> like Mary's alabaster box. So I hope that you would not be afraid and you would openly share about 
your experiences and what God has brought you through. And these now can be considered your expensive oil that you are now pouring out and giving glory unto God with. This is our oil that we are pouring out unto Jesus, just like Mary did with her oil from her alabaster box. So that's it. I look forward to your comments and your responses. I will, of course, as I said, put my story at the end so that you can read it and be encouraged and be blessed. And this is how we overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And yesterday I listened to a sermon and, and the pastor said, if you can't overcome it if you don't speak about it. If it's something that you allow to remain hidden, then you haven't truly overcome. And this is how we overcome. Okay, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so this is why, you know, for many of us, and we continue to come with these attacks and remind us of our past, remind us of the mistakes that we would have made. But with, if we have overcome it and if God has broken, helped us break free from it, then he can't come with it anymore. And even if he does try, we can let him know that here what I've already shared that testimony. Everybody already knows, and it's not a secret. It's something that I'm no longer ashamed of. I have overcome, and devil, you are defeated. That is my encouragement to you today. Let us pour our oil on God from our alabaster boxes. I truly am excited. I look forward to hearing each of your stories and I promise you I'll read all of them and like or comment on them and let's encourage someone else who may be struggling or may not even know about that someone else is going through what they are going through. Let's be that blessing to others today. That's it for this evening. I love you all. I thank you. Please like and share. Most importantly, I would really like for this video to be shared with others. All of the videos shared with someone else who needs to be encouraged, who needs to be ministered to. Whether they are saved or unsaved, it doesn't really matter. That's it for today. And remember that no matter what situation you may be facing, perhaps all you need to do is change your perspective.